Recording. Let me get some music going first of all. I every time I do these, I need to get some kind of a tunes blasting in the background. Thirteen Russians indicted in Mueller probe. I don't even know what the fuck it's about, but fucking Russians, dude. I like how a lot of people give me shit for, for saying fucking Russians, but I'm Russian. I feel like I can say that. You know what I mean? I don't. I don't, I don't, I don't understand that, dude. I just don't understand. Weeaboo Trash. That's exactly what we're gonna listen to while doing this video. Some good old Weeaboo Trash. <laughs> Hello guys, how's it going? My name is Darren. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at some more things that we have regarding whatever else updates uh, for now. And do a little bit of theory of crafting of why there's a bunch of warlocks on a broken shore casting spells. And that's something I missed, and that's the more exciting part where we get to theorize about what it could be. But first, let's talk about some of the other things we have updated. If you recently made an allied race and you decided to level as a Void Elf or as a Lightforge Janai, you might have felt like something was missing from your pieces of gear. Well, first of all, they've given you a cloak for Void Elf as part of Heritage Armor. I didn't think it really was needed, but it does look like a nice cloak, so some people are happy. And especially with the Janai, there was a big issue with terms of your armor. By the time people got it, it felt like, wow, this isn't the same armor that was promised to us on the, I guess, the images the posters or the ad for bfa the armor ended up being a little bit more silver so they actually corrected it and it looks like they have simply more than one type of armor for you to get maybe some of the implement in the future there's a purple version there's a slightly more yellow version then there's more of a silver-ish version i don't really know if that was meant to be something to be added in the future maybe there'll be more stuff for allied races from here on out possibilities are i guess possible if that's the best way to put it Another thing that could be mentioned is the way that they calculate ability damage in the game because of the change to the attack power calculations instead of, let's say, weapon uh, calculations. Those are just trying to simplify how the game functions, which is interesting that they didn't do this in the previous days. Uh, the way that the Legion math worked with the weapon, your attack power, your normal speed weapon, uh, speed, uh, then there's other coefficients and damage multipliers was basically a confusing system for a lot of people to figure it out now to figure out ability damage it's a bit easier because it simply works off of attack power and weapon dps weapon speed stuff like that very 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 simple but it does offer you a few different ideas for example changes in bfa alpha your frost scythe with a lot of your abilities does allow you to do a 13k worth of damage but when you take a 110 death knight and equip them with something like a cutlass just a, a low level low damage low level weapon uh and just to see what kind of damage they will put out the, the max level death they will put out something like 87. this tells me a few things one they're trying to simplify their math behind weapons i have no idea how that math works but i think it's a good idea because when it comes to balancing all these classes the simpler the math in my in my theory the simpler the math the easier it is to find that right number that a class should be hitting but this also tells us maybe with Iron Man, we might be seeing even harder results. I think with this change from what a low level, just a plain weapon without any kind of damage multipliers, any stats whatsoever, might make Iron Man leveling a little bit harder. And it is a lot harder with 735 leveling. I've been able to test that out for myself. And that's part of the fun. It might actually bring back Iron Man. That'd be kind of cool if that was one of the things that just they did. And that Iron Man is now a lot more challenging, a lot more fun, and something for a lot of people to get back into, especially with the fact that we have all these allied races to play. And I just might start the Iron Man challenge all over again with one of the allied races. I think that'll be an awesome idea. Yes, I want to do that. I'll do it with one of my lines characters or something. Now, we also have a bunch of Zalarathian, whatever the hell they're called, cultists hanging out on Broken Shore casting a long duration spell. What is a spell and why is it important? In the past, it was predicted that something is going to happen on January 16th because in the past, these cultists were casting a spell all at the same time for no reason whatsoever. And by the time they're done channeling it, patch 735 came out. So they're casting another, I guess, another spell just to kind of give any of the player base that loves a little bit of those um, 
I guess I would, I'm talking about the like Nightmare Mount, like the Puzzle Mount, and then the Riddler's Worm, the Riddle Mount. They added some kind of an Easter egg in the game to tell players, okay, something is coming on this date. And the date predicted is not a Tuesday, it's actually a Wednesday, March 6th. And a lot of people are trying to figure out what could it be. And I guess I wanted to give a little bit of my prediction of what I think that date could end up being. I honestly think it's going to end up being the Silitha storyline. It's not the most exciting one, but that's the most exciting thing, or the most realistic thing I think of, is continuation to the Silitha storyline. Finally, will we have Seething Shore, and I've been waiting, I've been seething for some Seething Shore, and it comes to BG. And the fact that we found out in 75 that it's not available day of the patch drop, I was not happy, but hopefully that'll be coming out. Hopefully we'll have the finisher of the story. Something has to do with weapons, maybe the fact that we'll be getting rid of them or some kind of like a storyline showing how we get rid of them. I don't even know if we can use our weapons. It's kind of all up in the air. I'm pretty sure realistically we should be able to use them, but something has to go awry where we forget them. And the question is, when do we forget them? Do we forget them after BFA comes up or can we forget them now and get like a replacement weapon or something? That'd be kind of cool if you got like replacement weapons. A weapon that has all the benefits on our artifact weapon, but you could choose like what weapon you want. And all of a sudden you would have like shamans running around with fist weapons, punching as enhanced. I don't know, it'd be kind of cool. Some other people are saying that probably the beta for BFA is going to be similarly released. The alpha has been released fairly early on and they have some changes, but to really draw in the players, to really get the progress of the BFA going, they got to get the beta out as soon as possible. We already know the deadline to BFA is going to be at least on the day of uh, September 21st, or anytime before that. So Blizzard wants to follow up and make it happen earlier, which a lot of people will be happy. The faster we can get BFA, the better. Then maybe the release uh, on March 7th or around that time, the beta and your boy gets to come in and really push a lot of the buttons, push a lot of the testing. People can really flood in and enjoy the questing zones, explore, test the content. Then we could probably expedite the process of making it happen faster. Plus, we can start kind of zoning out where everything that Legion is and kind of start to introduce everything towards the new expansion because the new rate has been out for a while. The Mythic Plus content has been out for a while. The PvP content is going to get a BG, which will be kind of cool to hold over some of the community. But it doesn't seem that there's going to be too much stuff added until BFA. Or they could be adding a lot more on the March 7th, 6th, whatever day it would be, to add more content to hold people over up until BFA. It could be something that has to do with allied races or questing. I doubt we'll get more allied races, but maybe some kind of a questing update. Uh, maybe we'll have the uh, possibility of more story stuff. This has to be something to do up until we are left over for BFA. I doubt the Blizzard is going to just let us sit there and just be in content drought for however long until we have BFA. So I feel like they are either going to release more stuff when it comes to BFA, or they're going to release more stuff for us to do around Legion. I'm not 100% sure on that yet, but I feel like with how Blizzard has done their patches in the past, there's never been a patch where we've been idle. I remember the drought. I remember patch 6.1, 6 6.1 and WAD. That was just a drought. We had selfie patch and that's it. So far, I'm very excited about BFA. Cannot wait. I got a video coming out talking about the leveling in 735. I actually got a character leveled in 735. I want to talk about my methods, how long it took, all that jazz because that is still a hot topic. And I just want to uh, get some of my thoughts after supporting it for so long. I just want to get my thoughts on it. Just kind of final closing thoughts on the leveling 735. What's good, what's bad, what can be improved on, and what else. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you enjoyed this kind of update. Let me know what are your thoughts on the cultist casting animation. And by the end of it, March 6th, when do you guys think it'll happen? And what do you think will be the, the end outcome of the cast? Do you think we'll get BFA beta being released in waves to a bunch of people so that we kind of can start seeing what's coming out of BFA to kind of hold off until BFA? Do you think we'll have more stuff to do in the game? I think obviously Silitha's story will continue, but let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below. And as always, if you guys enjoyed this video, go ahead and give it a like. Likes allow my videos to reach a wider audience and grow my channel. And if you simply enjoyed the video or simply want to help me out, like would be appreciated. Uh, if you guys want to see more content like this, more discussions, more updates, in about the game bfa stuff current legion stuff five five one ones go ahead and subscribe button down below to get two videos a day and if you guys want to catch the live streams which you do them every single day today's live stream should be a five five one one us alliance duel so if you guys want to get on your alliance characters and join some duels you can go ahead and do that thank you guys so much for watching i hope you enjoyed and i'll see all of you guys in another video